<laughs> Thanks. Um, all right, Patrick Wilson. Coming into the second season of Fargo. First season is phenomenally successful. Second season is a complete reset. You're a part of a whole new thing. Did you feel any kind of pressure or anxiety or any, or was it just easy? Well, I mean, it's never easy. There's, there's usually a, a, um, a healthy amount of pressure and excitement, and that usually means you're doing the right job when, when it doesn't seem easy, when there are a lot of unanswered questions. Will this work? Will you do well? Will people enjoy it? Um, and I think it helped. You know, we started shooting um, shortly after they won the, uh, I mean, they meaning first season and, and the producers in Noah, um, after that they had won the, the globe. Um, and it gave us a real boost because we were totally different. And I think it, it might have been a lot more stressful if, say, the show had continued on and you're like the one, then you just don't want to screw it up. But when you know we're all in the same boat, um, and I looked down the cast list and I thought, oh man, this is, this is a great, great, eclectic, strange group of people. <laughs> I, I, I thought we were, uh, I thought we were in good hands. I, I really did from, from the actors that I saw and from one conversation with Noah, just knowing how he, um, man, not even knowing where the show would go. I knew I'd survive. Um, but beyond that, I just, his writing style, the, you could tell there was just a vibe, a comfortable vibe. When you have directors, writers, you know, the showrunner, producers, the studio, the network, everybody's sort of all in the same room. And there's, you kind of can't tell anyone apart because they're just so excited just to be there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, you, knew, you knew we were in good hands. Well, let's talk a bit about your character, Lou Salverson, who's a connecting tissue from season one to season two. Um, you're playing the younger version of Keith Carradine. Talk a bit about your character. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I have played a lot of all-American guys, but I have never played someone so steadfast, um, sure. His, his conflicts were clear. All these things that you pray for in characters and you never get, um, or you rarely get, I should say. Um, his he's defined by his actions and for he's a very soft spoken devoted husband former uh, uh, seaman swift boat captain um, and he's defined by his experiences and by his actions right now and as the series goes on uh, both the impending, um, well, demise, because she's not in season one, the impending uh, demise of his wife, wondering when that will happen due to cancer, um, and this violence and uh, this, these horrible crimes that are just laying waste on his <laughs> homeland are, are unfathomable to a guy that uh, saw it in Vietnam. So you have this battle and the more it goes on, he is determined to solve this crime because I feel like he can't fix the war at home, meaning the cancer. So there's a real, there's a, there's a battle that goes on the entire uh, show. And I mean, one of the things that I just love about him is, is he just doesn't back down from anyone. He's so sure in his beliefs and his, his ability and his humor, <laughs> honestly, that it was so refreshing to play somebody so grounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that quality really came across in the third episode where you're confronted, you're confronting the Gerhards for the first time and you are the That's one it. character. Yeah, you do not. That's when it starts. Yep. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting too is that uh, the qualities that your character has is something that uh, runs through not just the first season, but in the movie as well with uh, Marge Gunderson, you know, this yeah. character who, yeah, I can't believe the violence that's taking place in their hometown. Um, so, and it's interesting too that uh, this is almost like one big novel that's called Fargo. I think that's how mm -hmm. your creator described it. 
Um, so did you do much looking into uh, the first season or the movie or anything like that to kind of uh, uh, form your character? Right. Um, well, long before I, I was offered this job, I, um, I had been watching Fargo quite a bit that year. I, I, and uh, for a number of different other reasons of film that I was writing that had nothing to do with Fargo, but I just, I always love the tone of Fargo. So, um, and it's one of those movies where when it's on, you watch it. So I, I, I know that movie backwards and forwards. Um, and um, there's a couple in the Coen Brothers canon, but really that Lebowski and Burn After Reading to me, sort of, I love the, the way that humor is used, not just violence, but that humor and um, humanity um, is, is, is used, really, in, in, in those movies. Um, so I, I didn't need a lot of refreshing, and you could tell from the first couple episodes of reading the TV show. So aside from season one, if I'm relating it to the movie, there it's a different tone. It's the same zone, but you can be broader in the movie. Um, that you can the, the the humor I think is a little more pronounced actually, um, and I think you it's a different. And we do, we're discovering that with the, for even the first episode of, uh, of our season, it can really teeter on being too funny. And if you lose the audience, um, then you're dead in the water. And they were conscious of that. We reshot a lot of the first episode. Um, you know, when I saw season one, Keith Carradine is somebody that, one, I knew. I, I, I met him several times, uh, I mean, 20 years ago um, at a girlfriend who's uh, – uh, who was on the road with him and knew him from a show. So I would see him quite a bit. And, um, and I, oh, he was always just one of those actors that when he talks, you just, you relaxed a little, you were grounded. That's that very folksy nature that I, that he just carries into every role. I mean, he's just, it's the voice. It's the, it, it, he's just very, well, that's what it is. It's this soulful, folksy nature, which I think lent himself so well to be in the midst of this tornado of season one um, and watching his daughter go go through this um, horrible case. And uh, and that scene, so what I did is I watched season one and I really zeroed in on the scene with him, him and Billy Bob. Um, not so much really for... You know, I'm at a different point in Lou's life. This, the, I always say the events in season two really inform how he ends up in season one. So there's a there's a much there's a there's an innocence. I don't think he's given up on humanity yet. <laughs> I don't think, um, and I don't think he's given up on humanity in season one. But I, I think, you know, the the eyes of a thirty something year old versus the eyes of a sixty something year old. Um, goes without saying you've seen a lot so um i didn't concentrate too much on you know his dialect or because noah was very conscious that i want us to make our own lou now within that i can go to his not tying you know, sitting on a chair with the shotgun there are a couple moments that i sort of did frame for frame not like i did for like watchmen or something where you want to get the exact pose right mm -hmm. for the uh, people who care about that stuff um and so so there were certain moments that i really um zeroed in on keith but most of it um was was honestly was just noah's voice and his writer's voice voices um informing who lou was mm -hmm. does that make sense it's a long answer no that makes perfect sense um so then what for you were some of the highlights of this season in terms of your character or scenes that you got to play? Yeah. I mean, putting, I, I love this with any character for me. It's all, it's, it's always when you're putting a guy or girl in, um, in an uncomfortable situation. Um, and the fish out of water, I've relished that because it just locks me in that moment in front of the Gerhardt's, Actually, that whole day, because <laughs> then he goes to see Mike <laughs> Milligan. I mean, that's a bad right. day. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> he meets his new, his new partner up there who's <laughs> completely inept. No offense, Kier. Um, 
you know, it's a, it's a, it's a real <laughs> eye-opening experience in going up there. Um, so, yeah, I would say the Gerhardt compound, um, and equally the doctor's visit with Betsy, when you're hearing words, uh, you know, when you are learning about what a placebo is, it just doesn't make sense. The whole, there's such an innocence. There's such a, you know, we love those characters, Kristen and I. I mean, you just love those people. The innocence of someone saying, well, why would you give her medicine that, that doesn't work? Not understanding this trial, you know, the, the, those, those really dig in, show him behind the eyes. And it gives me an opportunity to, to, to do, to just react and try to take it in and, and you can use the physicality and, and just holding your wife's hand and looking at that doctor. And, you know, I think he had, I think I had a line like, well, you're not, you know, you're not going to give her those, are you? Like, you're going to give her the medicine, like not understanding that that's the point of a trial. You know, those, those moments that really push Lou, um, that to me is, those are, that's a good sort of ballast of, okay, who he is, how he is with his wife, how he is at work. Right. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned that saying, uh, when you brought up and the, episode with the Gerhardts and, uh, and uh, oh God, I just, Mike Milligan. Mike Milligan. Uh, yeah, you're having such a bad day. But at the end of that episode, you go home to your wife and your family. And it's, uh, it's all the more tragic that that later scene that you're talking about with the doctor. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the great things about um, this show and about a lot of TV right now is that there is a scope to it like that, where you can encompass all of those different uh, kinds of things. Um, so that being said, take us into the filming of it, because it is like a 10 hour movie and you've done a lot of movies, but um, talk about doing something on this. Yeah, film. it's a 10 hour movie where you don't know the ending before you're shooting it. So that's unusual. Um, <laughs> I mean, they might, but we didn't. Um, and, and and you begin to uh, talk to each actor, and you go, "Well, how many episodes is your contract? Did you signed through <laughs> how many? Through eight? Okay. What episode are we on? <laughs> All right. So, um, so after next week, I may not see you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> we joke, but that is sort of true. Like, yeah, I was only in for four, and I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> you may be gone by five. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I it was. Um, I mean, it's talk about a well-oiled machine. You have, you have Noah at the helm. I'm just creatively speaking here. You have Noah at the helm. You have his writers that all really have his voice. It all goes through him, which is lovely and, and amazing. And I think really he didn't feel like he needed to shoulder the entire load of the season. Um, and then each director, we had four directors. Um, they, they would do two at a time. So they would get a chance to... You know, a lot of times in, in, in TV, it's these guys come in and, and the, you know, TV is, is, not a, is not a director's medium, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and they're usually the last one to sort of know everybody, um, not usually, but it does happen quite a bit. So when you have, you know, the way that they structured this, we would have two in a row. So you, you spent a couple weeks with these guys, and, um, which really helped because they got to understand and they've done all the homework, obviously by the time they show up, they've been in LA in the writer's room, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's how it would work. We would do, and as per usual, you'd end up going over for one episode and it would bleed into the next. And, um, but you'd shoot almost two at a time. Um, not almost, I think almost every time we did that, yeah, with the exception, maybe the pilot, you know, two, three, four, five, six, all that kind of stuff. You would shoot them uh, together. Um, and so you, you were only a few weeks out with knowing the end. And some people really, really wanted to know how it went down. And I really relished the fact of not knowing. I didn't want to have any judgments because I, it, it, it was the only time as an actor that you – you here, I'm trying to solve this crime. I know they did it. Like I, I, I just know it. 
they're lying to me. I give them, you know, me and Kirsten and Jesse, I, uh, Peggy and Ed, I give them every out. I try. I believe in the good of people. It constantly fails me. Um, and I didn't want to know the ending. I mean, I, I would read every script on my phone. I couldn't even wait to download it to my iPad. And mm -hmm. except for the end, I just, I didn't, I never asked Noah, hey, how's it go down? Like, I, I didn't want to know because I didn't want anything to mess with my head by that point. And that was a really comfortable position for me to be in. I, I loved it. I really just, I felt like a cop trying to solve a case and I didn't know how it was going to end. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the great things about your character and, um, you know, about all of the, the, I guess you can call them good guys in Fargo this season and the first season and in the movie is that they really are good at their job. You know, it, it, I think it'd be right. much easier to make them hayseeds and all of the criminals much smarter, but you know, yes, you guys really do know what you're doing. Um, that's important. That was something, and not to interrupt you, but that was something that, and I'll be honest, I not having seen the first season before I get the offer, I, I read the first couple episodes. And if you think about the first couple episodes, you're, I'm trying to get a read on this guy. Nobody told me anything. And I'm reading it. And, and if you think about it, if you remember, but I'm sort of going, I'm going, okay, He's at home. He's reading to his kid. He gets a call. He goes there. He says virtually nothing. It's just a series of like, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, looking at all the uh, the evidence. Uh, and then I think even uh, Kristen's character, you know, he partners up with his father-in-law. And you're trying to figure out, well, it, it does he, is his, what's that relationship like? And then how does – and then his wife sort of um, – fills in some of the blanks of the crime. Um, and, and then you start to wonder, well, I understood it. And once I read the Gerhardt scene and then I went, oh, okay, now I can, you know, it's like he can backload it. Now I can go back and realize how to, play those scenes um, because it does, it does take a while. And I didn't know, is he a good cop? Does he need the help of everybody? And the answer is that's what a good cop is. Absolutely. Um, so lastly, I wanted to ask you, um, we're an awards website and you got a golden globe nomination uh, yes. from this show. Congratulations. And to everyone from this season that got nominated, um, yeah. it was your second one. You got nominated previously for angels in America, which, also got you an Emmy nomination. Yeah. Um, so what does that kind of recognition mean for you as an actor? It's huge. I'd be lying if it wasn't. I, um, it, for me, the, the being back at that party for, you know, <laughs> the, the, the globe party and seeing the guys in my category that were all so drastically different. Um, it was, um, it was really rewarding. I did not, I didn't go, I don't go in there thinking, oh, I got this, or I don't, I, I really tend to not look at percentages and I think you may win. I mean, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to be nominated for several awards and, um, uh, and I haven't won and that's, that's okay. Of course you'd love to, but to be recognized for the work, you know, I'm usually the guy that, because I, I, I've got a lot of characters that are underplayed and mm -hmm. uh, not super flashy. And so to be recognized for, um, for, the, for the work that I do versus, you know, some of the other flashier characters that, that either I've done or, you know, other people do is, is nice. I'm usually the guy that, you know, an actor, like for me, Michael Keaton coming up to me and complimenting me on a, on a, on a movie and saying it's, Listen, that's that's the tough stuff. Under uh, underplaying it, trying to do this, you know, underplaying it seems like minimal acting. It's not that. It's just there's not a lot being said. How do you how do you how do you do that? How do you give an inner life in a turmoil without a crazy flashy role and a limp and a peg leg? You know, um, and 
when Michael Keaton says something like that, or actress that I really respect, then for me that's that's the award because um, so to be honored uh, uh, for for this from uh, from the Globes was a was just a really huge huge deal, and it was different on Angels in America. That was my first thing. I mean, I, every party was a new party then. I, you know, I, <laughs> I I didn't. So I I I can't even. I don't even remember those nights to be honest with you. I remember sitting at a table. I remember sitting in the you know in the in the theater of uh, uh, for the Emmys, but I don't. It was all such a wash. There's an appreciation that comes with it when you're a little older. So, um, you know, if it goes my way, great. If not, it's okay. You don't do it for that. But man, it's nice to get the <laughs> recognition. Well, congratulations again. Uh, you know, Thanks, man. Well you're welcome. Uh, and thank you so much uh, for taking the time to talk with me. It was a real pleasure. Cool. Really nice to meet you, Zach. Take care, buddy. Nice to meet you too. You too. I mean. Bye. Here as well. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you, man. <laughs> See you.